Hi, and welcome to episode 5. In this episode, we're going to be taking on some of these satellite missions with some unmanned probes for the first time. We're also going to be working with remote tech, and remote tech adds on a couple of extra challenges that comes with trying to get these satellites into their specific orbits. Remember that remote tech requires you to have a communication link with the Kerbal Space Center, and I've yet to put up any communication satellites, so each of these satellites are going to have to communicate with the Space Center on their own. Now before I get into some of the challenges of remote tech, you might be noticing one of the advantages, and some people might even say one of the more cheaty advantages, is the flight computer um, with the new Beta.90. Um, I no longer have SAS with the simple uh, command module or the uh, probe parts that come at the early stages of the game, but what I do have with remote tech is this flight computer and what you can see me doing is putting in values for pitch, heading, and roll to help me control my ascent. Um, if you think that's cheaty, ah, that's fine, but I really don't care. I'm tired of uh, flopping and flipping around with my rockets and I want some more precise control, so this is what I've got. Anyway, on to the mission itself. There are actually two missions on this one. One is going to be to test um, the landing gear which is attached to the side of the main stage uh, once we are at a, above, what is it, 72.4 kilometers. And the other one is to put a satellite into orbit. Now many of the satellite uh, orbit missions require you to have the satellite in a pretty particular orbit, in particular orientations of the periapsis and apoapsis. This particular mission I picked though because all it requires me is to have a specific period for the orbit and the period is a little over 17 hours. And I did a little bit of calculating and I figured out that a, a uh, orbit with an apoapsis of around 12,700 kilometers and a periapsis of only about 80 kilometers has the right period. So my plan is to go up on this very steep ascent and you can see that I am going up on a very steep ascent, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Oh, there I am testing the landing gear, now that I've reached the altitude that I want. I had to be suborbital too, but so okay, that one's taken care of. Um, and the other thing I need to do here is raise this antenna. There are two antennas on this uh, beast. One is a the, DB, the DP-10 antenna, which is on the side of the main stage but that thing only has a range of around I think it's like 250 kilometers so it's going to be out of range pretty soon. On the main satellite itself there is a Communitron 16 which has a range of 2500 kilometers but you need to extend it so and it uh, if it's when it's extended it's fragile so I have to wait till I'm at least into the upper part of the atmospheres before extending it. By the way, most of the parts that you see now falling away are coming from the KW Rocketry pack. That main stage had fuel tanks from that pack. The engine, the Maverick engine, which I think looks and sounds fantastic, is from that pack. The fairings that were protecting the probe core and the antenna were from that pack. Um, great pack if you want some extra rocket parts. Anyway, as I was saying, the, the, I need to go on a very steep ascent. So right now I'm just burning with this main stage until I get my Apple apps up around where I want it to be. I do have, a, I ran into a bit of a control issue here. One of the issues with the flight computer is that you need to make sure that um, when you have the flight computer window selected, you have no control of the program, the KSP program itself. And sometimes you're thinking you're pushing buttons controlling the rocket, but you're actually still selecting the uh, flight computer window, and, and that can create some problems. So that's what I just had there, but I'm straightening myself out. I'm aiming a little bit below the uh, prograde vector because I do want to also be raising my periapsis. Remember, I'm shooting for a periapsis in around 80 kilometers, as well as an apoapsis in around uh, 12,700 kilometers. And once I hit my apoapsis, I ended up going to the map view and taking a look. You can see I put the satellite into a rather inclined orbit and the reason for that is because this satellite, to complete the contract, has to remain in orbit for at least 28 days. And if it were in the same plane as the moon, it would have had a good chance of encountering the moon which would have messed up its orbit completely or 
potentially even perhaps crashed into the moon or gotten tossed right out of the Kerbin system. I didn't want any of that to happen, so I ended up launching into an inclined orbit so I knew it went below the moon. And you can see what here why I went into this steep ascent. This is allowing me to stay in communication with the Kerbal Space Center, which is represented by the blue dot, the communication link represented by that yellow line. Um, if that communication gets severed, I have no control over this satellite whatsoever. Now, the antenna, remember, only has a range of 2,500 kilometers. And you can see now I'm up to an altitude of about 2,000 kilometers. So I'm getting close to the end of the range. And once I'm outside of range, I won't be able to control this satellite anymore. So what I am doing now is completing my orbit insertion from this location here. And one of the things I'm using is the radial burning. You can see I am burning in a negative radial direction right now. And what that does is, some people have described it as you're rotating the orbit around your point and you kind of, of where the ship is right now. And you, you kind of are. I like to think of it as when I burn radially in, I am pulling the apoapsis towards me and making it smaller while at the same time pushing the uh, periapsis out. It's a way of adjusting just those two without being at that location. Now it's an inefficient place to do it. The best place for me to raise my periapsis would be at apoapsis, but at apoapsis I will be way out of range, communication range, so I, that's not an option. So I'm doing it at this place here, and I'm playing around a little bit with my uh, pitch. Um, the closer I put my pitch to the prograde vector, the more I will be pushing up apoapsis. The more I push my pitch towards the retrograde vector, the more I will be pushing up my um, periapsis. So I'm playing around with and looking at the periapsis numbers and apoapsis numbers um, and playing around with the pitch. There's no rush here. I, I can tweak around with my orbit for quite some time. I have quite, uh, more than enough fuel. So I, I'm looking at my periapsis numbers, playing around with my or my apoapsis and periapsis numbers, playing around with my pitch and uh, taking advantage of doing these radial burns to get the orbit into what I want it to be, which remember is a period of a little over 17 hours, and it has to be a real orbit, so the, the periapsis has to be outside of Kerbin's atmosphere or else it'll never, it's not gonna work. There we go. The uh, orbital requirement of this contract just went green in the contract plus window, so that tells me that I fulfilled that part of the contract. Now it's just a matter of waiting 21 days and 5 hours, and this contract will be complete. I almost forgot to use Kerbal Alarm Clock to my advantage uh, and put myself, I'm going to be doing some other things, so I'm going to create an alarm here and for 21 days, 5 hours into the future so that I can revisit this uh, satellite when the need arises. And finally we have this first stage debris which is coming in on this very steep re-entry into Kerbin's atmosphere. Putting parachutes onto it would have been a useless endeavor because this thing is falling from too high of an altitude at too steep of an angle. It's going to come in exceedingly hot. There's no way parachutes would have survived but I think it would be fun to watch it burn up nonetheless because deadly reentry should give us a little bit of a show here. That's it for the explosions. I was a little disappointed that the uh, none of the tanks or the main engine exploded, but uh, eh, that was fun nonetheless. And now we move on to Junksat 2. Uh, Junksat 2 is going to do another one of these 
um, orbital insertion satellite missions. Uh, this time, we are going for a roughly circular orbit with an altitude of around 12.8 to 12.9 kilometers. Uh, the thing about this particular satellite mission and why I picked it is because it has no argument of periapsis, or more specifically, the argument of periapsis can be whatever you want it to be. And that means that the periapsis and apoapsis do not need to be in specific spots in space. So that's good, because trying to get them into specific spots in space while having my limited communication abilities because of remote tech um, will be a little bit more of a challenge. Once I have a ComNet uh, sat network up, which should be done in the next episode or two, hopefully, um, then those missions become pretty easy and pretty trivial and actually become a bit of a cash cow. But for now, it's going to be uh, dealing with the ones that I can deal with. So again, very steep uh, launch profile for exactly the same reason as before. Again, using the flight computer, uh, entering in uh, my pitch and my heading and my roll rather than controlling the ship manually. And here we are in the upper parts of the atmosphere. Um, Junksat 2 is carrying a different antenna. Instead of the Communitron, it has the DTS M1, which is a directional antenna. And what that means is you have to point it. So here I am deploying it, and then I have to point it, and the obvious thing to point it at is mission control. So um, it's a directional antenna, but what it has is a much greater range. This range is in, a, in around 70,000 to 80,000 kilometers. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's almost to the edge of the Kerbin sphere of influence. It can reach all the way out past Minmus. And since this satellite has to go out to only an altitude of just under 13,000 kilometers, I can actually communicate all the way out there with it, as long as I have line of sight to the Kerbal Space Center. And the other thing this thing has are solar panels. Now they're just the static solar panels, and I didn't put on as many as I normally would like because of the part count limitation. But this thing can generate its own electricity, which will be great because it's going to take me some time to get out to the apoapsis so I can circularize this. And here again, you can see uh, the communication line in yellow. But as Kerbin rotates, I'm going to lose my communication link. So this thing will go through a period of time of being in the dark. But by the time I get out there, the communication link does come back. But unfortunately, that communication link did not last. And as I continued to time warp out, I suddenly found myself dead in space. Now, when I lost that communication link, at first I didn't notice it. And I noticed it when I began to try and take control of the ship and realized I had no control whatsoever. And the issue was that the antenna had no power. I had run out of electricity thanks to the limited number of solar panels. Um, I tried to orient them so that I was getting an adequate amount of sunlight, but I clearly did not. They weren't generating enough electricity, and by the time I got out there, this thing was dead in space. Now, this could have gone really bad. This could have been the end of this mission, but it wasn't because they were generating a little bit of electricity, and they ended up generating just enough for me to regain control of the craft, and continue my burn and once I got the burn going that engine was generating electricity and that allowed me to continue my burn and uh, circularize my orbit and finish off this contract. And with that I now have enough funds to upgrade the vehicle assembly building. I will no longer be limited to just 30 parts. I can now go up to 255 parts. This will allow me to set my sights quite a bit higher, but I think that'll have to be for future episodes. So we will see you then.